I am Sally Abbas, Associate Director of Corporate Governance at the School of Business, and I'm directing Egypt Women on Boards Observatory. Today, we are honored to have with us a line of distinguished speakers joining the webinar, and we'll start with the welcome remarks from Dr. Samir Atalla, the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research and an Associate Professor of Economics at AUC School of Business. He is a, a non-resident scholar uh, at the Middle East Institute and a fellow at the Economic Research Forum. He earned his PhD and MA in economics from Miguel University. He also holds a Master of Science in Engineering from the University of California at Berkeley and a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from AUC. And now I will leave the floor to Dr. Atalla. Thank you, Sally. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues, uh, webinar participants, distinguished participants in the panel of today. I'm, I'm very, very pleased to welcome you all on behalf of AUC School of Business on behalf of Women's Board and behalf of all our partners that participate with us in this very important activity and very important contribution to uh, sustainable development goals and particularly gender equality in the Egyptian society and the Middle East and the region at large. Um, uh, let me start. I want to just be very, very, very brief in my welcome remarks. Um, I have basically four points that I want to um, um, come across. Um, one of them is our role as the AUC School of Business in uh, creating a system, creating an ecosystem that develops uh, future responsible leaders for Egypt and the region. This is a part and parcel of what we do in our uh, activities, programs uh, on, on a daily basis in the School of Business. It's not just that our academic programs are designed and geared to uh, shaping leadership skills in uh, our students, but uh, the vast majority of our activities are geared towards this. But also our vision is that we want to also be the knowledge hub that uh, has knowledge about the region. And hence that uh, this activity, uh, this report, and this engagement with a lot of our partners is really part and parcel of our strategic vision and mission um, as a school of business. I cannot think of a school of business in the region uh, and in Egypt that cannot uh, take into consideration and conduct activities that are related to gender equality. So this is really uh, some of the um, priority activities that we conduct at the School of Business. Um, we are very proud of it. We're very proud of the achievements that uh, this activity has uh, uh, reached out in the past 10 years since it uh, started and then since it's officially launched um, seven or eight years ago. Um, this is uh, uh, an example of an activity where we kind of push the agenda for gender equality from the top down, but also we have other activities in the School of Business that are uh, pushing gender equality from bottom up. And uh, maybe if there is time, I can tell you more about these, but I encourage you to look at the website of the School of Business. It has a lot of the activities whereby we uh, um, tackle the issue of gender equality. The second point I, I wanted to uh, to bring about is really the progress that has been done throughout the past years. So this is the sixth report that has been uh, uh, that has been launched uh, today, and it's it's really remarkable the progress that uh, we have been uh, achieving uh, together as partners and as companies working in the Egyptian um, economic uh, environment. As Sally mentioned, I'm an engineer. So as an engineer, we always think that what can be measured can be improved. So um, uh, if we look at the numbers, they can indicate really a positive trend in the improvements in the participation of women in boards of companies, whether they are financial companies, banking sector, state-owned enterprises, or uh, companies listed in the stock exchange of Egypt. We started from 10% in participation today, we are happy to report we've reached the 23% participation. We started with 174 women in the, an active database of women with qualifications, and now we reached 1,074 women in our database of qualified, uh, uh, qualified women to participate in board of directors. This is, in my view, a remarkable achievement, uh, and which puts really a challenge for us to put our aspirations for the future. And this is the third point I wanna make across. I, our aspiration is to reach 30% by 2030. And I would say and challenge this, and I think we need to achieve more. Uh, I think we are closing the gap, we are getting closer, and I think our aspiration should go beyond that. 
And I think we should aspire to really coming close to the international average of something around 40%. And I think this is, this is really possible if we continue the progress that we have been doing in the past years and continue working together. And I think this is also possible because we have a very wide, diverse uh, selection uh, of talent that come from different educational backgrounds, from different types of credentials, from different types of skills. And we just need to tap on this uh, uh, vast pool of talent of women who can serve uh, the Egyptian economy and in the Egyptian, uh, um, in the Egyptian uh, uh, companies that operate in the Egyptian economy. And all we need to do to move forward to this is to challenge the mindset that the status quo is okay. If the status quo is not okay, we need to continue our progress. The last point is really, we could not have done anything here without working together. I'm very proud of the partnerships we have, whether with the international organizations, such as the UN, uh, UN Women, with uh, the regulatories such as the FRA, with the government such as the, the Ministry of Planning, with the uh, National Council of Women. I was speaking last week in uh, an international conference and uh, I was highlighting the importance of really, really the, the importance of key partners that have exactly the same vision and mission. It helps a lot when we are all aligned and we all see the objective together as really an objective that is challenging yet is achievable. Again, I want to thank you all for attending. I wanna, uh, I'm, I wanna, I'm gonna pass the floor to Sally uh, for the um, for the next uh, part of the agenda. Uh, you're muted, Sally. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Samer, for your remarks. And now we'll be uh, listening to a message from uh, uh, Her Excellency, Professor Dr. Hala Saeed, Minister of Planning and Economic Development and Chair of the Sovereign Fund of Egypt. Dr. Hala is a distinguished economist and uh, academic figure who has served as uh, Egypt's Minister of Planning and Economic Development since 2019. She was previously the Minister of Planning, Monitoring and Administrative Reform and she was recognized as the best Arab minister of the uh, by the Arab Government Excellence Award in 2020. Uh, in addition to her uh, ministerial roles, she shares the Egypt Sovereign Wealth Fund, and she is a member of the Central uh, Bank's Board of Directors. Uh, Dr. Saeed has launched several programs for capacity building, gender inclusion, and youth empowerment, including the Women in Leadership Positions program under WET 2030. Let's listen to Dr. Hala's uh, message. Distinguished guests and esteemed colleagues, it is with great pleasure that I join you today for the launch of the 2023 Women on Board Annual Monitoring Report in paving the way towards achieving the 2030 Agenda. This report plays a critical role in furthering our understanding of the impact of women's leadership on boards. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Egypt Women on Board Observatory for highlighting the importance of having women in leadership position. Women are becoming key active actors in shaping the future, not just passive beneficiaries, empowering all females isn't just the normally sound thing to do. It's an investment in our future. Women empowerment fosters strong communities by allowing women's voices to be heard, leading to more effective decision-making and a just inclusive society. Understanding this, Egypt has taken a pioneering step by launching the world's first national women's strategy aligned with the sustainable development goals. This strategy reflects Egypt's commitment to empowering women and advancing the role in society. Among these goals is the goal to increase female representation on boards of directors. However, managerial and board positions have long been male dominated, notwithstanding that women can also bring valuable perspectives to strategy, social responsibility and customer insights. Statistics have shown that companies with the largest proportion of female CEOs and board members outperform their competitors in terms of median return on equity and assets by at least 74%. In this regard, Egypt has made 
it a priority to encourage businesses to boost the number of women on their boards. For example, the 2021 Central Bank of Egypt resolution required all banks to ensure that at least two seats on their boards were held by women. Similarly, the Egyptian Financial Regulatory Authority issued decrees requiring EGX listed and regulated firms to increase the number of women on their boards to a minimum of two or to increase the ratio of women to 25% on the boards. As a result, according to the Egyptian Women on Boards Observatory 2023 report, the percentage of women in senior leadership roles and on boards of publicly traded companies on the Egyptian exchange, in the banking industry, in public enterprises, and in the non-bank financial sector has increased dramatically to 22.2%. The overall indicator for women representation on board in the studied entities showed an increase of approximately 3.6 percent between 2022 and 2023. In the current annual growth rate continues, it is projected that 6.7 percent target will be achieved within the next three years. The ultimate goal is to reach the 2030 agenda goal of having 30 percent women representation on boards by the year 2026. We envision a region where opportunity thrives. Women's economic empowerment is key, driving both ethical and economic progress. Collaboration is vital to overcome challenges. By empowering women economically and advocating for their leadership roles, we leverage their skills and drive our region's development. Therefore, I would like to highlight that this report launch marks a significant milestone towards a positive societal impact. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Hala for her message and her continuous support and uh, engagement. And now I will leave the floor to Dr. Samer to introduce Dr. Maya Morsi. Thank you, Sally. Uh, uh, Dr. Maya Morsi obviously is uh, uh, one of the uh, representing one of the key uh, uh, partners in this uh, project. Dr. Maya office took uh, the office as the president of Egypt National Council for women in 2016. Uh, she's elected as the third and the youngest president of the National Council of Women since it was established in 2000. Uh, she became also a member of the United Nations Committee for Elimination of Discrimination Against Women uh, in her capacity as uh, the president of the National Council of Women. Uh, uh, she's also had the, uh, the Supreme Council of Arab Women Organizations uh, in the League of Arab States, and she's also the current president of the Ministerial Council of Women Development Organization. Uh, Dr. Maya uh, has been really a strong supporter uh, of this initiative and this project. I'm very pleased to, that you took the time to join us today. I know you are out of the country and very busy with meetings uh, on behalf of the team, on behalf of the rest of the partners. Ali, sincerely thank you uh, for taking the time to come to speak to us in this very important launch of the Women on Board the Observatory. Dr. Maya, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samer, uh, mm. for the introduction. And it's always a pleasure uh, to be uh, with the team of the Egypt Women on Board Observatory. This is one uh, of the uh, close <coughs> initiative to our heart. This is part and parcel of the women uh, national uh, women uh, strategy. And um, I would like to thank Dr. Hala Saeed, the Minister of Planning and Economic Empowerment, Dr. Mohammed Farid, the Chairman of RA, of course, yourself, uh, Dr. Samer, and uh, UN Women, uh, Koika and Sida for the great support throughout this period. Uh, yes, I'm right now in Geneva attending the, the Committee on the Status of uh, the, uh, the Discrimination of Women, uh, the CEDO. And I'm always proud with the annual launch of the Women on Boards report and the value that it brings to the National Council for Women and the relevant targeted sectors. I'm specifically also very proud with the indicators this year reaching 23% compared to 19.7% in 2022 and 16.7% in 2021. This gives us a push that things are moving forward. Of course, we want to have uh, more and more. 30% is the minimum uh, percentage or, and 50% uh, is the ultimate goal. But I'm seeing the progress that is happening uh, throughout this period. I constantly talk about the Women on Board report as one of the government of Egypt's uh, observatory under the ENAO, the Egyptian National Observatory, as the country's not only uh, observatory tool, but also an incentive tool for the targeted sectors to increase 
the representation and the effective participation of women. So being there as a company, you, you mean that you have done something good for women. Egypt has exerted an immense effort to women empowerment within the private sector in the past years. We have established also with the, with the, the Closing Gender Gap Accelerator in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the support of the Ministry of uh, International Cooperation. We have 100 companies that signed the Women Empowerment Principles and 30 companies that are undergoing process of the Egyptian gender seal. This is also with the support of UN Women. And I hope our companies, the 100 plus the 30, would be part and parcel of the Women Observatory at one uh, moment. The economic empowerment of women in Egypt is one of the highest level of priority within the Egyptian government. Without economic empowerment, we're not going to achieve what we are aiming to achieve. Egypt's vision 2030 places women as one of the main drivers of achieving uh, its 2030 vision and developmental goals. And you have heard Dr. Hala Saeed how powerful, how, how uh, encouraging, and how really strategically engaging uh, all the processes of the Ministry of Planning uh, and ensuring mainstreaming of women needs and gender equality indicators. And last year, we have reviewed the indicators of the Egyptian Women Empowerment Strategy to monitor the progress and determine the gaps, the gaps under all the four pillars of the strategy. This was led by the independent Egypt, uh, Egyptian National Observatory, led by Basira. I strongly believe that the women on boards is contributing to the government overall, overall economic empowerment agenda because actually by bringing women's perspective to the financial leadership, women on boards are not only shattering glass ceiling, but also building a more equitable and prosperous future for all. I believe that um, by having women uh, on boards of financial and non-financial and banking uh, boards, this will be positively reflected in better financial performance, balanced decision-making, fostering a more stable and inclusive inclusive economic, land, uh, economic landscape, drawing policies that are sensitive to women's need, uh, needs, expanding the talent pool and driving economic empowerment throughout participation. And also last, uh, challenging the status quo of being dominated by only one perspective and fostering innovation and e economic growth for all. And finally, Leadership builds a more resilient and equitable financial and, monet um, and monetary system that benefits all economic sectors. I would like to conclude by thanking the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development for mainstreaming women needs and the leadership of Dr. Hala Saeed throughout this process and putting it as a priority within the government's strategic uh, vision uh, and action plans. This is something that we, I'm personally proud to present usually to the uh, to the international community at large. I would like to also to thank FRA for the ongoing strategic build, uh, build up of policies that empower women within FRA and listed companies and bringing also that policies into action. I would like also to thank AUC uh, for the program of uh, the development of this important tool and join women for the continuous support as well as COICA and SIDA. We would have been able to do this without this contribution and this continuous support. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure always to be with you. Thank you, Dr. Samich. The floor is back to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sally. Uh, thank you, Dr. Morsi. And we appreciate your continuous support and ongoing commitment. It's worth, it's worth mentioning that uh, since the launch of the uh, Women on Board Observatory, Dr. Morsi has been our biggest supporter, <clears throat> advisor, and mentor. And we really <laughs> appreciate this, Dr. Morsi. Thank you so much for your time. And now we are going to uh, show uh, uh, the vi a video uh, highlighting the 2023 Women on Board's annual monitoring report results. This year's results represent another milestone as the Women on Board indicator reached the highest level at 23.3% compared to 10% in 2019. We are that much closer to achieving the 2030 goal of 30%. And now we'll watch the video. The 2023 Women on Boards Indicator increased by 3.7% in one year, reaching 23.3%, marking the highest percentage since 2018, as per the 2023 Women on Boards Annual Monitoring Report issued by AUC Egypt Women on Boards Observatory. The overall Women on Boards Indicator has more than doubled in five years, increasing from 10% in 2019 to 23.3% in 2023. We are left with 6.7% to meet the 30% women on boards goal. 
Sustaining this increase pattern in the coming years will enable the overall indicator to reach the goal of 30% women on boards by 2026. The total number of women on boards improved positively, reaching 1,563 in 2023 compared to 1,320 in 2022, with a growth rate of 18%. The non-banking financial sector was the main contributor to the total number of women on boards, accounting alone for around two-thirds of 2023 total women on boards. The number of women on boards of EGX-listed companies increased significantly from 324 in 2022 to 425 in 2023, with a growth rate of 31.2%. The banking sector increased from 54 in 2022 to 59 in 2023, achieving an increase of 9.3%. The public enterprise company slightly declined by only one woman between 2022 and 2023, with a negative growth rate of 2.3%, reaching 43 in 2023. The non-banking financial sector realized significant growth, increasing from 924 in 2022 to 1,072 in 2023, following a growth rate of 16%. The 2023 Women on Boards Annual Monitoring Report tracks the representation of women on the boards of EGX-listed companies, the banking sector, the public enterprise sector, and the non-banking financial sector supervised and regulated by the Financial Regulatory Authority and identifies the gender gap to reach the 30% women on boards target by 2030. Progress in women on boards representation has been achieved across the four categories. The non-banking financial sector companies led with 25.2% women on boards in 2023, compared to 22% in 2022. The EGX-listed companies reached 21.7% in 2023, compared to 17.3% in 2022. The banking sector women on boards percentage also increased from 16.5% in 2022 to 18.7% in 2023. Finally, the public enterprise sector improved, achieving 12% in 2023 compared to 9.3% in 2022. The total gap covering the four categories followed a declining trend of almost half between 2020 and 2023. To achieve the 2030 target earlier than anticipated, the placement of women on boards has to be accelerated across the four categories. An estimated 455 women need to be placed on boards of companies and banks in the coming seven years to meet the 30% goal by 2030, compared to 692 in 2022. 161 women in EGX-listed companies, 35 women in banks, 70 women in public enterprise companies, and 189 women in non-banking financial sector companies are needed to join boards until 2030. The 2023 distribution of companies and banks by number of women on boards exhibited transformation in structure, observing deviations towards the increase in the number of companies and banks with two women on board, accounting for almost half of EGX companies, banks, and non-banking financial sector, reaching 56.5%, 45.5%, and 49.5% respectively in 2023. This explains the decrease in the number and percentage of zero women on board. From 2019 to 2023, banks and EGX-listed companies with zero women on board have witnessed the lowest percentages, reaching 3% and 4.2% respectively, followed by the non-banking financial sector with 10.2% and the public enterprise companies with 54.8%. On the other hand, the percentage of two women on board representation was boosted between 2019 and 2023 across most categories, accounting for almost half of the banks and companies. Companies and banks with three or more women on board realized enhancements in the Egyptian exchange, the banking sector, and the non-banking financial sector, with the highest incline observed in the banking sector. The non-banking financial sector had the highest number of companies, with 30% or more women on board compared to the other categories, whereby 34% of total non-banking financial sector companies successfully complied with the 30% goal in 2023, with 227 companies. The annual gap in the number of women on boards to reach the 30% goal followed a decline trend from 113 women in 2019 to 65 women in 2023, reflecting the commitment of companies and banks to meet the strategy goal. 23 in the Egyptian exchange, 5 in the banking sector, 
10 in the public enterprise sector, and 27 in the non-banking financial sector need to be added to their boards to achieve the 30% women on boards. Egypt Women on Boards Observatory, founded in 2017 by the AUC School of Business, is recognized as a specialized observatory within the National Council for Women framework. It aims to increase the representation of women on boards in Egypt to 30% by 2030. The observatory experience can be shared regionally and internationally to help countries create similar consortia relevant to their context. The observatory received the 2022 Innovations That Inspire Award from the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, AACSB, and the AMBA and BGA Excellence Awards 2022-23 from the Association of MBAs and Business Graduates Association. Partners of the observatory bring together government, business associations, research institutions, international organizations, non-government organizations, and regional and national networks. We are particularly proud of AUC Egypt Women on Boards Observatory partners. Their unique partnership and cooperation resulted in a broad coverage of the major business sectors where women are on boards and providing enough information for research and the database. The Egyptian Board Ready Women Database hosts over 1,074 qualified candidates with diverse areas of expertise and educational backgrounds working in 26 different economic sectors following the OECD sector classification. Candidates and skilled women can join this database by completing an online membership form. Egypt Women on Boards Observatory offers free board placement service to support companies and banks in realizing the benefits of increased diversity and inclusion. Companies fill out an online board placement request form to receive this service. Our message today is to coordinate our efforts to reach targeted goals. We encourage champion executives to foster gender diversity and sponsor women to leading positions within their companies and banks. Imagine this, a world where businesses thrive, not despite diversity, but because of it. It's a world where every voice is heard, every talent nurtured, and every opportunity equal. Now, let's turn that vision into reality. One woman is a token. Two is presence. Three is voice. Uh, thank you, Shireen, for uh, uh, showing the video. You will find the full report uh, today on our website, and uh, you will find the link to our website in the, chat, in the chat. Now I will give the floor to Dr. Samir to introduce Dr. Islam Azam. Your floor is yours, Dr. Samir. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. This is, uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, the video shows really uh, clearly the progress uh, that has been done in the past few years. And it shows uh, the areas where we can continue to work on to uh, uh, reach our target. Now, um, it gives me a really great pleasure to introduce a, a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Islam Azam. Dr. Islam Azam is obviously the vice chairman of the uh, Financial Agrarity Authority, FRA, um, since uh, he was the vice chair since uh, January 2021. Prior to that, he was a colleague in the School of Business as an associate uh, professor of finance uh, uh, in the Department of Management. Uh, he joined us in the School of Business since 2005. Um, he has a, a, a very strong record of uh, teaching and research, whether in areas of corporate and international finance and in derivatives and uh, in, um, in investment. Um, prior to, uh, in, in his career, he also was a visiting professor in a lot of uh, um, uh, distinguished institutions across the globe, whether in the US or South Africa or South uh, or Saudi Arabia. Um, he also is a board member for several listed and non-listed companies. Uh, it gives me really great pleasure uh, to welcome Islam uh, to represent the FRA as one of the key partners in this uh, in this project. Dr. Azam, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks a lot, my dear colleague, Dr. Samer. I would like to thank all of you for the invitation to this uh, very important event to us as FRA. In uh, 2023, the Financial Regulatory Authority made huge progress in increasing the representation of women on board within the non-banking financial sector. Uh, if we look at the uh, statistics, we will find that the overall percentage of women on board 
increased to 25.2% in 2023, up from 22% in 2022. This is aligning actually with our FRA strategic goal of achieving at least 25% female representation on board. Uh, the number of women on board grew by 16% over the year, with 148 new female board members introduced in 2023. And actually, if we look at the distribution of companies by the number of women on board, it showed actually significant changes. Like if we look at the companies with zero women on board, it decreased by about 34% to 67 companies in 2023. And if we see companies with only one woman on board, it decreased to 198 from 303 in 2022. And uh, actually companies with only two women on board so a huge increase uh, to 54.2%. That's a very huge increase, reaching uh, 327 companies. Uh, and the list of NBFs, companies with 30% uh, or more women on board, increased significantly in 2023 to reach uh, 227 companies, accounting for uh, almost 34% of our NBFs companies. And actually, in 2023, the capital market sector showed a huge uh, progress and it is the highest woman on board percentage of 25.7%, uh, closely followed by micro and SMEs and leasing and factoring sector uh, at around 25.1%. And the consumer finance and insurance sector, they lagged slightly, but not uh, so much by behind with 23.1% uh, and 22.4%. And actually, let me tell you that uh, uh, like half an hour ago, the insurance uh, law was just approved. Uh, finally, so it's a good news for us. And uh, there was an 11.9 increase in the number of women and non-executive director from uh, 2022 to 2023 with a percentage of women non-executive director reaching 31%. However, the, however, the number of chairwomen decreased by 25%. The percentage of women as a CEO and uh, MDs uh, uh, was 10.3%, uh, which is a slightly higher than the previous year. Uh, this figure and trends actually reflect the effort of the FRA to enhance gender diversity in the MB MBFs, showing both progress and the area of future improvement. So thank you uh, so much for this invitation. Thanks, my dear friends. Thank you, Dr. Azam. This is, again, uh, very promising uh, 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 numbers. Uh, again, I want to thank you personally and thank uh, uh, the FRA for their leadership in, in this domain, particularly as you pointed out, uh, the, your uh, requirements to having at least two women on board uh, or 25% uh, in the listed companies is really a, a policy and a, um, a direction that really helped uh, shape the results that uh, we are facing, uh, we are seeing today. Uh, also, I want to take this opportunity to thank the other uh, banking uh, financial sector and thank the central bank uh, for also uh, central bank of egypt for the decision to have at least two women uh, i think this type of leadership and policy is really what helps us push uh, push the agenda forward and achieve not just our targets but go beyond our targets thank you so much dr Islam. uh mm -hmm. now i'm i'm also pleased to uh, welcome uh, another partner another key partner um, in, in this project and this activity. I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Ms. Christine Arab. Ms. Christine Arab is the uh, country representative of the UN Women Egypt Country Office. Uh, she has worked on gender equality and women human rights in the UN system for over 20 years. Uh, she began her career uh, in uh, in Jordan and she has worked in the Ara United Ara in the, in the um, in the United States, in the in several Arab states in Asia and the Pacific, in the Balkans and the Caucasian and the Caribbean. So it's a very wide international uh, experience with a, a very solid agenda of gender equality. Um, and uh, so uh, she has been uh, really one of the key partners. Uh, Ms. Arab holds a master's in arts and political science from Dalhousie University in California. Uh, uh, it's also, as it has been mentioned before, uh, we have received the support of UN Women in Egypt for the past six years, and their continuous support has allowed us really to achieve uh, these results and our vision uh, uh, for this report. I'll leave it now for Ms. Christine Arab to give her uh, remarks. Thank you so much, Dr. Summer, and it's such a pleasure to be here. My apologies for my connectivity issues. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear Dr. Halasaid's uh, video and, and Dr. Morsi's continued commitment and also 
uh, Dr. Islam and the FRA's commitment to this. I want to congratulate you, uh, the Women on Board Observatory. UN Women has been so proud to be a partner um, for many, many years. Um, we look forward to continuing that. I would flag just a couple of things because we're really pleased to see the increase. Um, we're looking at a significant increase since the first report, but more important to the increase in numbers is we're looking at an increase in the number of sectors. So it, it, when the original reports came out, we saw, of course, those under FRA, those under the central bank, they were moving. But now we're seeing more and more sectors and a greater diversity of women on boards in more sectors, and that's crucial. Um, it is unique. Dr. Maya said at the start that this is a unique process where the government and academia have come together to formalize the tracking of temporary special measures. Egypt's policies that it's put in place, what we call in our world temporary special measures, are crucial. They're the only reason why these things happen. By and large, they don't happen organically. And if they do, it happens extremely slowly. Um, power does not give power easily. And so it is. it does require policy for this. But too often it's not tracked and therefore it's invisible. Now you can say with certainty, and I really want to genuinely applaud that. I've worked as you highlighted, Dr. Samar, in many regions. I'm actually about to rotate to another region uh, in a few weeks time. And I will be taking this example and rep trying to encourage its replication. And I would really welcome as you and women the opportunity to support the government of Egypt um, and the uh, women on Boards Observatory to share this example beyond the Arab states region, um, because we don't have enough seriousness when it comes to tracking. And I really want to commend the quality of the training that, that we've been able to develop with IFC and the Women on Boards Observatory and uh, UN Women, because, and I hear this from our private sector partners time and again, that they really appreciate the quality and trust the quality of the trainings that are being carried out. So I really want to commend that as well, because getting board certified, men should be getting board certified with the same rigor that women are getting board certified, frankly. Too often in the world, uh, people will say, well, what qualifies her to be a leader? It's a fair question. I do wish they'd ask it of both men and women. What qualifies anyone to be a leader? It's not that women have to prove it sec uh, above and beyond men. So thank you very much. I want to thank our partners in this, uh, the Swedish Development Agency and the Korean Development Agency for their continued support as well. Um, and the congratulations on reaching 23% overall. This is really, really important. So thank you again. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much, and best of luck in your uh, in your new chapter uh, in your new region, I presume. Uh, and uh, best of luck. Thank you so much again for uh, being a partner, a supporter of this initiative. Uh, it has been really a pleasure working with you. I hope we'll be able to see you before you leave Egypt uh, soon. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank. Uh, I'll leave now the floor to Sally to introduce our next speaker, Sally. Uh, yes, I would like to thank Christine so much, and I wish her all the best in her uh, new. Uh, 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 place that she's going to. And uh, now I want to come to another activity that is supported by UN Women, which is training. Through the partnership between UN Women Egypt and AUC Egypt Women on Boards Observatory within the framework of the UN Women ILO joint program promoting uh, productive employment and decent work for women in Egypt, Jordan, and Palestine, which is implemented in partnership with the National Council uh, for Women and the Ministry of Manpower and is generously funded by Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, SEDA, and Korea International uh, Cooperation Agency, COICA. We trained 464 women in management, finance, leadership, digital marketing, human capital, in addition to other areas that are dominated by men, such as supply chain, real estate, logistics and transportation, digital transformation, and still we have 53 more women to train. I would like to welcome two remarkable women who joined one of these programs that uh, we offered by the AUC School of Business Executive Education. They will introduce themselves, share their experience, and what the programs added to them uh, and their next steps. Uh, first, I would like to welcome uh, Ms. Uh, Parihan Farag. She is the purchasing section head, Le Grand, uh, attended the Supply Chain Management certifi uh, Professional Certificate Program. Uh, welcome, Parihan. Welcome. Hi. Yes, please. 
But please introduce yourself and tell us more about the program, uh, your experiences there, uh, what the, the program helped you at your, at your work. Okay, uh, I am Fariham Farag. Uh, I am uh, purchasing uh, section head at uh, Le Grand. Uh, my, uh, uh, my experience uh, with the, the AUC uh, uh, that I uh, I got my uh, my certificate uh, of uh, supply chain professional uh, last uh, uh, last last March uh, through uh, the the sponsorship of uh, of UN uh, of uh, Quaka. Uh, so uh, this uh, it, it it enhanced my uh, my skills in a in my critical field uh, to uh, to stay competitive to the the continuous uh, changement in the supply chain uh, uh, market. Uh, also, it uh, it empowering uh, the uh, empowering women in the field of uh, supply chain. Uh, also, the reflection after receiving it, uh, uh, it's uh, broadening uh, my understanding and boosting my confidence. Uh, also, it, re it reinforced the, the importance uh, of uh, education and inclusive uh, opportunities. Uh, also, it's in inspiring me to advocate for more uh, women in supply chain, also as I... I uh, I told, and also it was uh, beneficial uh, in uh, in my professional uh, life to uh, that it's uh, it increased uh, my marketability and opened uh, new career opportunities uh, for me, and oh. also it uh, pos position it uh, position me on um, for le leadership uh, roles. Uh, and uh, to be uh, more confident, sorry for uh, the disturbance as I'm at war, uh, and also to it's allowing me uh, to drive innovation and the sustainability uh, in my field. Uh, that's it. I hope uh, that uh, I uh, I uh, I speaking. Uh, uh, and uh, I I want to uh, to express my uh, my my glad and my uh, uh, honor to uh, to take uh, this course at uh, at EU, at EUC through the UN uh, empowering women uh, sponsorship. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Perihan, for your uh, uh, feedback, and uh, we appreciate uh, your remarks. And now I would like to welcome Ms. Sandra Azmi, Women's Rights Program Director Care Egypt at Care Egyptian Foundation. She attended Finance for Non-Finance Managers Program. Welcome, uh, Sandra. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, yes, I work at the Women's Rights Program in Care Egypt Foundation, and I'm also currently acting uh, Deputy CEO for programs. So um, I chose to attend the finance for non-finance managers because I believe that uh, if you want to grow in the managerial positions, you always have to understand the finance. Uh, so it was important for me to attend the training. And uh, of course, with no surprise, I was the only one from the from uh, civil society. <laughs> Everyone was private sector, but it was uh, a good way to get out of uh, my comfort zone. Um, I've selected this. So as I said, uh, on one side for individual purpose to help me uh, grow in my career and understand finance better. And the other reason I also selected this course is because us as an organization, we are trying to uh, to work on creating social enterprise. So uh, how we can run enterprises with a social goal. Um, and so pricing and costing and uh, calculate profit. So we work in sun-dried tomatoes. We work uh, in, um, we've created something called the, the Fab Lab. So we have opportunities for, uh, for, for creating these small enterprises. But uh, most of us maybe lack uh, knowledge on how to, to do the costing and the pricing and the, and the profit, etc. So for me, the course was really good. The, the format, being able to do it online, but really feeling uh, that uh, we are all together and we do group work and that the, 
the professor is, is always uh, uh, trying to help us was great. So the, for the format was really useful for me. And of course, I was uh, really uh, thankful for the scholarship for UN Women. Um, of course, from my job, I've worked with UN Women, but it was the first time to, to get something uh, related to a training. And I was, uh, as usual, proud that there are so many initiatives uh, for women um, around that we can benefit from and that can help us uh, develop ourselves and develop the places where we work. Thank you. Over uh, thank you, Sandra, for your remarks. Uh, uh, on a closing note, uh, I would like to say that gender equality is not only for women. Gender equality leads to a better society and better governance for both men and women. We encourage institutions and men in leadership positions to sponsor and empower women to have equal opportunities and take an active role in the attain attainment of gender equality. Finally, I would like to thank you all for joining us today, and I would like to thank all our partners for their continuous support. We look forward to continuing our efforts to reach our targeted goals. Also, I would like to thank the Egypt Women's On Board Observatories team, Shireen, Nermeen, Amira, and Hagar for their commitment and hard work. Thank you and see you again next year, inshallah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.